Napari is one of those libraries that I regret not installing a long time ago. That's because Napari makes working with scientific images easy in Python. It, uh, it, it makes uh, handling, visualization, and analysis of uh, 2D, 3D, multi-dimensional scientific images as easy as it can get in Python. So this is why I regret not installing it a long time ago. And in fact, I did try installing it uh, about two years ago when I was working on my older workstation. But back then, Napari used to be a bit challenging when it comes to installation. And now it is very easy and I'm gonna show you how easy it is. Well, I hope I'm going to show you how easy it is because I haven't installed it on my new workstation. I just went through the documentation and according to the documentation, it just takes a couple of steps and let's follow those steps and see how the experience looks like. So this is one of those videos where I'm going to discover the process as uh, I'm, I'm recording this video. So let's hope the process uh, runs a bit smooth. So let us go ahead and jump in to the Napari documentation to get a quick idea of what it takes to do this installation. And I love to work on Anaconda, especially the Spider IDE, because it makes things easy for us to visualize. It's the best of both worlds of coding in a uh, IDE and also coding in a notebook, right? I mean, why do we love notebooks? Because after every line, you can see like uh, the output right there and you appreciate. And Spider IDE kind of gives us the power of both of these where I execute a line and I look at the variables right there on the screen. So either way, I'm used to that. So I hope Napari doesn't stop me from using any of that. Uh, let's jump in then, okay? Okay, let's start by searching for Napari on Google and it should be the first link. Let's go ahead and click on it. And it says it's a multi-dimensional image viewer for Python, but it's more than that. Apparently you can use it in combination with scikit-image, TensorFlow, scikit-learn, it's up to you. Now, what distribution to install? Let us scroll down with batteries, I love it. Pip install, Napari all. So that's it, but let's create a new environment. And again, if you're working with Conda, it's pretty straightforward, just copy this text but first thing first let's go ahead and open our command prompt let me just click on the first one powershell uh, you can use uh, command prompt or powershell it doesn't matter let me run as administrator and there you go uh, okay so now let us go ahead and uh, first thing first we need to check what environments we have uh, I think I tried to install Napari once in the past, uh, but let's see if that environment shows up. Let's go ahead and do conda env list. So that should give us our environments. And we have Label Studio, Mask RCNN. I have Python 38 Napari, if you can see. And again, that's something I tried in the past, but now let's create a new environment uh, from scratch, like conda create Napari, just copy and paste. And that should be Python 3.9. I'm happy with that, paste. Hit enter. It's gonna take a little while, so I am going to speed up this process as part of my post production. Okay, there you go, we are done. It doesn't take a few seconds, it takes a few tens of seconds, but I did speed up the video there. So now let's activate the environment we just created. This should be instantaneous, there you go. And now let's go ahead and pip install. So uh, what is it? Pip install Napari all. So it includes everything, the viewer, all the environment. So let's go ahead and do it. I'll also speed up this part of the video. Okay, again, it took uh, probably a couple of minutes and we are done. Now, I think we are all set to use Napari. That's it, that's all it takes to install Napari. So first thing first, I can run Napari from here, but I am a Anaconda spider person, like from IDE. So let's change the environment to Napari environment on my Anaconda navigator and spider is not installed. So let's go ahead and install the IDE right there. Of course, you can use any other IDE, but I like to use this. So let's go ahead and launch it. 
and I would love if Napari can be opened from executing a couple of lines of code in Spider. That way I'm in my comfort zone. So let's create a new file. I am going to call this uh, Napari. Let's just save it in downloads. Napari underscore test save. And uh, I also downloaded an image into the same directory. So let's go ahead and uh, add some notes testing Napari. I think it's just import Napari and then Napari.view image. So I'm working on Python 3.9. So I just followed whatever the command to install, you know, uh, from the Napari documentation as of mid 2022. Okay, import Napari. First thing first, let's run this line to see. Wow, that's a good, good, uh, that's good, right? So it's working fine, at least no errors. Now let's do assign a variable viewer is what my Napari and let us uh, view image and let's go ahead and uh, reference it to the image that I just downloaded before I started this video test underscore image dot png and I want to read that as RGB so RGB equals to true let's run it uh, what's going on here <laughs> okay uh, put this in quotes make sure you follow the basic Python rules there right so Python syntax Okay, let me put this in quote. Oh, come on, quotes. There you go. And now let us run this, and it should hopefully open our image. Um, what's going on here? Um, it is apparently oh, object has no attribute shape. I have no clue what that is. It threw an error in the console, but it did open the Napari viewer without my image again. I am learning this as I'm going because I do not have any experience with Napari whatsoever. So maybe I did some sort of a mistake. I have no clue. Let's not troubleshoot. Let's go ahead and file open it this route this way to see if that opens test image. There you go. That works great, right? So this is uh, this is amazing. Let's play with some things. Opacity, contrast. Uh, what else? Uh, what else uh, can we do here? So let us uh, open a different type of file. Let's open a CZI file. So open folder, open sample. Let's open a .CZI. This is the Zeiss image file. And does it open it? Um, no, it doesn't. So it says uh, not available reader error. So obviously I need to install some sort of a plugin, some sort of a reader to read proprietary images. So again, one lesson that we learned, but let's try to open something that's semi-standard. Let's open a OEMITIF file. Yep, I open it, I have it. Let's just drag it. That also works great. What is going on? Okay, so it opened this image as a new layer. Apparently it's almost like Photoshop. Let's click and undo this. Oh, I love this. This is a multi-dimensional image like it has a, it's a time series and a Z stack. So you can move through the Z stack, you can move through the time. Uh, so I like that the sliders are right there. It's showing up and I'm not sure how to change this view to a 3D image. Again, I don't want to get into that yet. Let's, let me get familiarized with. I don't want to explore the software while recording a video I am recording a video to to share my experience of installing Napari uh, just by following their direction. So it's basically it comes down to pip install. That's it. And it seems to be working. Now, if you want to use this on a regular basis, I don't if you just want to explore the viewer on a regular basis, I don't think you need to fire up your IDE or anything. So just before I quit this video, one last test. Let me open my uh, let me open the command prompt and uh, see if we can fire up Napari just from writing a couple of lines and uh, and uh, end this video. Okay, so first thing first, let us go ahead and open any of our command prompts. I don't know, I'll just pick one right there. Let me put that in the middle of the screen so it's easy for everyone to see. And uh, first thing, let's change the environment, right? So, so first of all, conda environment list, what do we have? What environments? Yep, there you go, Napari ENV. This is the one that we want. So let us do conda activate Napari dash ENV. 
and now it's activated so let's get into our python and uh, import you can create a batch file to do all of this but this is the first time we are doing so why not just follow the process import napari and now what so instead of opening an image i believe you can just do napari dot viewer with an uppercase v and do that and that should open our viewer if i'm not wrong Again, I memorized the two commands that I really need <laughs> to fire up Napari. And if I haven't done any mistakes, I should see it any second now. There you go. So now we have this. Now I can go ahead and file open. So let's open the file one more time. Uh, the OMET file. So there you go. There you go. And now this is, uh, you can slide through your Z stack, slide through your time series. And I believe these button right there, this is where you can toggle the display between, uh, uh, display between uh, 3D and uh, 2D viewers. And I can see this. And there seem to be some, some design aspects that need to be fixed. You can see when I hover my mouse over, right down there it says transpose order you can clearly read it but when i move the mouse to the next element right there i cannot read it i cannot read what's going on i cannot read even this and is it because of anything else here let's resize it and let's do exactly the same so here i cannot read it now i can read this something funny going on i don't know what because previously that was tough to read so there are maybe a few things from design point of view. Uh, this looks okay, but in general, of course, for what it does, minor design flaws and it's free, open source, come on. What, uh, it's only gonna get better. So please stay tuned to learn more about my experience with Napari. And of course, I am going to use this for real, uh, solving real world applications. We will be exploring the plugin section later on. Uh, at least I'll be exploring it and if I find something noteworthy, I'll record a similar video and share it with you. This is exactly why you need to hit the subscribe button so you get notified when new videos get uploaded. Thank you guys and uh, let's meet again in the next video.